Hey everybody, let's talk about the helpful content update and how you can succeed in a post helpful content update world with your blog. So first things first, does SEO still exist? Cause that's a question everyone's asking. Yes. It's just changed. Honestly, it's shifted and that's okay. I think we all expected it with some of the different things on the horizon. There's the cookie apocalypse coming in 2024 um, that was supposed to come in 2022 and then 2023 and I don't know. It's been pushed, but like that's something that we were all expecting would change the game. We thought SGE would change the game. We thought AI would change the game, but it was an update that no one was kind of prepared for. And that's just the nature of the game. Things will always be shifting and always be changing algorithms are meant to be updated. And in SEO, we've gotten pretty lucky that we've been pretty chill for a long time, um, but we had a major one and things have shifted. Now I've gone through and analyzed over a hundred sites. I did about 170 in depth and about 250 total. Um, I did some cursory ones before I suspended my 500, uh, like big audit of 500 travel blogs because the core update and the review update kept shifting things. Every time I would like kind of get a handle on what might be happening, things would change. And a lot of what I was noticing is that it's not one thing. And that's pretty much what Google told us is that the helpful content update is site wide. So it's very hard to pinpoint like one specific thing that, or even like five specific things that definitely play a role in succeeding post helpful content update. I did my best. I'll talk about my own sites and like what I've seen. Um, but honestly, some of this is just, you have to try and see what you can do for your own site. And there might still be something holding you back. Um, it is very unfortunate that Google doesn't like, I don't know, rank us individually and tell us like, Hey, if you just fix this thing, it'll be okay. They don't have time. They don't care about us. So we have to do that work for them and kind of figure out what's going wrong. So post HCU, there's a few things you definitely need to look at. Number one is user intent. User intent has always been the focus of SEO. And if you weren't focusing on user intent, if you were more focused on like word count or hitting a certain number of keywords or anything but user intent, you were doing it wrong. And definitely all those other things are a part of it, but you have to start from a place of user intent. And I don't think that just starts with a single post. It is site wide. So if you have a site that is about, I don't know, sleeping dogs, my dog is asleep upside down beside me right now. Um, if it's about golden retrievers, I guess, and you're writing about chihuahuas, does that help your audience? Now, if it is comparing golden retriever versus chihuahua, which one has a stronger bite or something, um, I would probably believe chihuahuas to be honest, because golden retrievers, you might not know this, they have double gum, so it actually hides their teeth so they won't break your skin when they bite because they used to pick up ducks when they were hunting and they, people didn't want big golden retriever teeth marks in it. Um, so because of that, I could write that post. But if I just start writing about like chihuahua clothes, what? How does that relevant? Or cats or like walking your cat in a forest. I've seen a number of people doing that recently. That seems to be a trend. Don't know why. I am not satisfying the user intent of my primary audience. And I think that's really important is to sit down do some marketing basics of coming up with your customer avatar, knowing who you're talking to. And then when you're doing keyword research, eliminating what doesn't matter to that person. And that does also mean writing some stuff that is harder that like maybe you wouldn't have written otherwise. Um, I always have written things that I kind of wanted to write or that were basic, like a general roundup of some information because someone just needs it to be able to consume any of my other content. If you're only writing like um, random, I don't know, forum keywords that relate to Rome or something where it's like, okay, um, I don't know, how old is the Trevi Fountain's oldest penny or something? Like if those are the types of posts you have and you don't have anything about things to do in Rome, you don't have anything about like um, activities or where to stay or any of that stuff, you haven't really satisfied your user intent because you've given them a bunch of random nonsense. It doesn't connect to each other and doesn't connect to their actual like reason for being on your site if you're a travel blog. We can definitely have some of that stuff, but it should not be all that you have. We really want to make sure that we are like being helpful with everything. And even within your posts, get to the freaking point. You can tell with this video, I tried to start as on topic as I can. I've definitely varied a little bit. That's me. It's my ADHD, but I tried to be like, okay, here's what we're talking about. Let's get to the point. Let's answer the question. Let's go, 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 go. Your time is short. You don't have 400 hours to watch me record this video and someone else doesn't have 400 hours to read your blog post either. So we really want to make sure that we are getting to the point in your intro. 
please, for the love of God, write better intros, guys. The amount of intros I go through that I'm just like, what was the point of this? This is a hundred words that said absolutely nothing except five keywords. That's not helpful. You need to in your intro, and I really recommend the Spear Framework for Intros by Jamie IF, and I kind of blend that with my Costco free sample policy, which I'll get to, um, but essentially it is like writing an, an introduction that actually addresses your user and their pain point, what they're looking for, and then tells them the answer. That's that Costco free sample policy. Give them an egg roll before they buy 800 egg rolls, and that can be used for your word count kind of an idea. So like if you have a 2000 word post, why should they read 2000 words if you don't tell them in the intro what you're talking about? Now, I come from a background of novel writing. I wrote my first novel when I was 11 and I've been studying it very intensely ever since. It was a bad novel, fully admit that, not published. <laughs> um, but I've been writing them for a long time. I also studied journalism for like two classes in university. Um, and the thing that both talk about is that your first sentence matters so much in a novel and your first chapter matters for whether someone's gonna keep reading. Same for news articles. That first paragraph should be the most like dense kind of like informational packed uh, sentence or paragraph, pardon me, in the whole post. You go like from specific to general. And that kind of happens the same way in your blog. It really should go specifics in your intro. That way someone knows what's the point of reading this. Is there like, is this gonna satisfy my intent? I have literally gone to gluten-free restaurant roundups before and found out every single thing in the list is not gluten-free. Like there was like, okay, the first two were, but then they added like 18 other ones that, oh, well, it has a salad. That doesn't count. Who wants to just eat like a house salad when they're at a steakhouse? That sucks. I want like actual food and a side salad is not enough to make this a gluten-free restaurant. <laughs> but if they told me that in the intro, if they'd said there's only two, I wouldn't have wasted my time and now I hate that website and anytime it comes up, I will not read it because it annoyed me. And that's something we don't wanna have happen. We wanna to get to the point and tell them like, okay, I am this person, you should listen to me because of this. Here's what we're gonna talk about and here's the answer. Because even if someone just gives you a bit of the answer, they're gonna want more. They're gonna to want to know more about that thing. <laughs> if all they needed was just like, um, I don't know, visit in spring. Well, no, they kind of want to know why to visit in spring. They want to get more of an idea of stuff to do. They want your advice on like, if there's a specific time in spring, spring is a number of months, um, they'll keep reading the post. But even if they don't, if you've answered that intent, Google will like you better, plain and simple. Um, so definitely get to the point quickly. Also making shorter posts. So I don't think short is necessarily akin to like better, but I do think a lot of us were randomly writing really long posts and I am a wordy girl. I am trying so hard to keep this succinct for you guys. And I would love to sit here for four hours and talk about this because that's how I roll. Like I just, I hyperfixate and then I talk a lot. Um, but with a blog post, you gotta get to that point. And remember that people are so busy. <laughs> like the, they don't have time to read a 15,000 word blog post regularly. They wanna know what's the best time to go to that place. You need about 2000 words to tell them that. But that being said, it's very keyword specific. Just like the amount of times you use the keyword, just like the amount of secondary keywords, just like the amount of FAQs, look at what's already working. Look at the top 10 on Google for that specific keyword and see, okay, what should we do? I just wrote and published a post called the SEO dictionary that is 15,800 words that goes against all of the post HCU advice I could give you about being succinct, about being like short, not having a bunch of extra words your like competitors don't have, whatever. It is a long ass post, but it's good for my user. And that's the thing is user experience will trump all else. And for that specific keyword, all of my competitors were over 8,000 words. So mine's still very, very long. A lot of them had like um, download the PDF and don't actually read it here, but I wanted to put it online too, just in case. Um, but I do have the PDF as well. So someone can just leave and get the PDF. Same intent, satisfied. But someone could also just search on my site if they don't want a PDF. Because personally, I don't want to download things. I cannot find them. I will lose it. I'll download it eight different times because I have no idea where I put it. So I violated some of the rules, I guess. That's okay if it helps your user. And I literally polled my users to be like, hey guys, which do you want? And most people said blog posts and PDF. So I did both, easy peasy. 
So that's why we want to like actually figure out who our person is too. So even if you can't ask them directly, you can try to approximate what they're going to need. As for like rules of the road, I guess with SEO, it varies by keyword. I have always hated when people be like, okay, but how many keywords per hundred words or per thousand words, how many images per thousand words? It depends. There's so many differences for that dictionary post. It has 15,800 words. If I put an image for every 200 words, you guys would leave that post so quickly. There are some images, but they're very much like, here's an example of what I mean by this, or there are diagrams or something. They are not just a pretty picture of a sunset for the sake of a pretty picture of a sunset, but some posts would need that like best sunsets. <laughs> then you might have more images because you might be rounding up like 20 sunsets in a 2000 word post. So you would have like a, an image per hundred words sort of a thing. It depends always, it just does. Um, so I think that's really important. Now, I also think like, kind of going back to the keywords of it all, um, I think it's still important to find easy keywords, but I do think it's important to have some general keywords. So if you're just targeting those weird things, like I said, you're going to have an issue. You really want to make sure that you're like actually answering the user intent across your site. And I do think site-wide intent is missed a lot. Um, I also think user experience is missed. So having a site that's hard to read, having content that's hard to get to, um, having like a ton of pop-ups or something. I do not believe that ads actually play a role post HCU. I've trialed turning them on, turning them off. I've had sites with them on, sites with them off. Like She Knows SEO had ads and it was fine. My main site has ads. It got knocked down a little bit, but it's come back. Like it, it just depends. I don't think that was like, I think if you had intrusive ads, that would be a problem. But I think having ads is not necessarily what would knock you off. Now for branded searches and affiliates, that's where I got hit the hardest. So definitely like my affiliate income is way down and that's really, really frustrating. Now affiliate posts are one, the kind of the ones that I would write the longest for sure. Um, they tended to be the ones that well, some of them I had my writers do, and so I don't love them, so I'm fixing them. But like, there just wasn't enough EEAT sort of a thing. Um, but for some of them, like when I would write them, I would go way too in depth. Like I would get way too wordy with it. They are long. They don't necessarily get to the point fast enough, which I think is a problem. Because I would just be like, oh, but you need to know this about this too, and it's so fun. And I just get excited like a little puppy, and then it got too long. I needed to get to the point quicker. So that's something for sure. I also think that like Google right now is really rewarding branded searches by the brand. So Viator and TripAdvisor and Booking.com and things like that are outranking us in a lot of situations. Um, but I do think part of that is that with listicles, Google really wants you to do more of the things on the list. And it sucks that like Booking.com hasn't done all the things, but the actual person who runs the hotel has added their hotel to Booking.com. So I think that's part of it. But if at all possible, put the things that you did in the first thousand words. I think that's going to help for sure. Um, but you can also really safeguard yourself against this by just turning your whole site into a sales funnel. That's what I do. So my affiliate income, like even though most of my affiliate posts are down, my income has dropped for sure, but not nearly as much as it would have if like I didn't have this safeguard sort of thing in place where I've turned my whole site into a funnel going from informational posts to the sale. And I teach that in the SEO roadmap, which I will link in the description if you would like to join us in there. Um, but it is very much a strategy I have built because I wanted to make sure that like my informational posts weren't just making me 20 bucks or something off of ads at like random days. I wanted to make sure this is like actually going to work and make me money in multiple different ways. Now you can also diversify traffic sources for sure. There's so many different things you can do to help with the, um, the affiliate revenue. But if you're just trying to go after like straight up whatever Viator is going after, you'll have some trouble. You just will. Um, but a big way that we can beat them and ways that we can beat even like some of the big names that are ranking, and this is one of the ways that they're ranking, is backlinks. <laughs> backlinks are huge. When I was looking at the top, like just the top tens of so many different keywords and looking at different sites that had one post helpful content update, the thing that I kept seeing was that they'd actually done the thing and it was so apparent that they had done the thing. Because even though you might have, if you're not clear about it, to Google you haven't done it. Um, but they also had so many backlinks. So this is why people who often do press trips and are more like kind of Instagram um, style travel bloggers did really well is because they do the things. So like some of us SEOs, and I am fully guilty of this as well, especially this past year, 
we get kind of stuck just writing and sitting at home and we don't go do the thing. And I think that's really, really important is to actually do the thing. <laughs> um, it's probably why She Knows SEO did so well because like I am actively doing SEO constantly. But with my travel blogs, I wasn't really writing this year. So most of the content was from older trips I had done and I wasn't adding in new stuff. I wasn't like, even when I was rewriting them or updating them a bit, which I didn't really do a lot of, to be honest, I was pretty busy with SEO this year. Like there were, yeah, there were just gaps for that. And I hadn't built backlinks to every single post. Um, and especially like my competitors who maybe went on a tourism trip or a press trip with the tourism board, they had a backlink from the tourism board. Like that's a bigger deal than me getting a backlink from some DA10 site. So you really wanna make sure you are putting in the effort to get a diverse backlink profile, but especially to get links to those specific posts. And you can literally just email tourism boards if you want to, to be like, hey, I wrote this about you, just so you guys know and see what happens. Now, I do think it's also important to have some like uh, backlinks from big name sites like the BBC, like Business Insider, things like that. That's where Haro comes in handy. Um, having links from like high quality sources is going to benefit you as a brand. And that is something that you'll see over and over and over again mentioned is like, have a brand, have a brand. Having a brand is not the same as having a store. First of all, you do not have to have a store. I mean, how many magazines out there are brands but don't have a store? Most of them probably. I don't really know a lot about magazines, but they have like, they have name recognition and that's kind of the thing that we're looking for. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have 40 different channels happening everywhere. Um, I definitely think having a secondary channel is helpful anyway. And I do think that nowadays, especially with this having hit people so hard, um, a way to kind of circumvent the pain of it a little bit is to have more extra traffic sources for your sites. Um, I am working on diversifying mine, but it, you don't have to like immediately diversify into 20 different places. It's just about like having, having other people talk about you to some extent. So Google knows who you are and that you matter. Um, even if you don't have a great social media following, you can have social media, maybe post once in a while, but I don't think that's also enough to create a brand. I do think it is actually about having like the authority in your space. If at all possible, especially in travel, I do recommend looking into like joining a media association um, because they will talk about you and they will help get you press trips anyway. It's something I'm looking into in the new year um, after going on a press trip with a friend of mine uh, who is so good at this stuff. Um, but it is, yeah, it's something that is going to benefit you because then you have that source of like uh, of backlinks and free travel, especially for us travel bloggers. Um, now for other industries, Try to get accredited in any way that you can that will help your expertise if you're already accredited make sure you say it all over the place so even if you're in like tmac or something which is a travel media association of canada if you never mention it just like if you never mention that you went there and you did the thing and you talk about specific experiences and if you only mention it once we believe you less so mention it more times but like you have to put it somewhere so have a good about page, have a detailed about page. I redid mine on She Knows SEO recently and like it definitely people were like, I never knew that about you. And like, I got people who were like, okay, I trust you more now. And I think Google feels the same way because I said like, here's my whole story. <laughs> and here's like, I've done a lot of things. Here are my successes. Here's who's talking about me with featured in stuff. I created a whole press page just cause I wanted to, to be honest. But I do think that's like a beneficial thing to have if you have press um, so that yeah, people know who you are why they should listen to you and like they know that you are an authority in that space if you talk about insurance and you don't have any qualifications to talk about insurance who wants to listen to you now you can hire experts i don't exist in any spaces with my sites where i am not enough of an expert the point to me is to run sites where i'm an expert now if you have a ton of like a, a massive portfolio of sites i do understand that you probably do have sites that are like that so you can hire experts um you can just go through the accreditation yourself in certain spheres to me like i've only started sites in somewhere where like i do the thing and i feel like i would call myself an expert in that space otherwise I don't want to have a site in that sphere, in my opinion, like that's just how I feel about it because I would have to go out and get those extra verifications and I would rather just be that resource. Otherwise, like, why am I running the site? But that is just how I see it. If you um, are not enough of an expert in your field, you need to bring one on. Um, you need to, or, or to become one. Otherwise, why are people listening to you? I would not want to read about brain surgery from me. I would not want to read about, I don't know, 
whatever like US taxes are, because I'm not American. I don't pay US taxes. I don't understand how they work. So like, that's not a thing that I have to deal with. It's like the, I was thinking specifically about like whatever your um, tax plan, like your retirement plan is. I was trying to think of the name of it, but I can't remember it. I don't pay that. Like I don't have that. So I have the Canadian version. Even then I wouldn't trust me as a source on that. Cause like, I just have mine. I don't know a lot about them. So you really want to make sure that you're like positioning yourself as someone that people can listen to. And those are some of like the biggest takeaways. Definitely things that I still saw like that do seem to matter is mentioning that you've done the thing, um, but not just saying, oh, by the way, I did this. Like have kind of in context, um, like little bits of information about you having done the thing, um, having things that are like, you could only know if you did the thing, if you've experienced it, or as an expert that like you would know about that topic. Um, there's lots of people out there who are, but don't include it. And so you definitely need to make sure that you are including it in your content. And then just as usual with SEO, do not have things that are dragging you down. So if you have posts that are not performing well, that are ranking like 80 or something, and you can't seem to bring them up, no index them. No indexing content does help because like anything that is like a lower ranking essentially is dragging you down. And we do not want to drag our whole site down. Again, the helpful content update is site wide. It is like across your entire site. And the problem with that is if you have stuff dragging you down, it's dragging down the good stuff too. And we don't want that. So you definitely want to do an audit of your site and find things that are underperforming and either improve them or get rid of them, cut them loose. Now they might perform well somewhere else, in which case no index them, but if they are just sitting there for no reason, but you like them, why are they there? Like, what's the point? There's not really a point. So I would recommend doing kind of a culling of your site and trying to get rid of anything that is not beneficial to your user, doesn't bring traffic and doesn't have good Google rankings. That's what I'm doing. And um, especially after I had to like go through and fix those index posts, um, it is a good way to improve your site overall and improve your kind of visibility with Google. There's plenty of other things you can do as well. Um, key takeaway boxes seem to be doing okay for some people. If you don't have an author box, get an author box immediately. Um, if you don't reference your experience in the intro, adding like a little about the author or like author's note where it like says, your experience with the place is definitely a good idea. I have another video on my channel of Stay New England, um, and that is something that they do there in some of their posts where they will be like, okay, this is our expertise on this specific topic, especially if it's kind of a subtopic of your main topic. So if you have like a travel blog about Italy and you have a post about something that's like right on the border of Italy, you might wanna add a little author's note that's like, I've been here, I've done this thing, blah, blah, blah. Um, because it's not going to really relate to your big author box where you go into like your Italian knowledge. It's like, okay, but now we're in, I don't know, geography well enough to, <laughs> to say what's next to it, but now we're in this other place. So meh, we need to be pretty clear that like, we still know that thing too. Um, yeah. So those are kind of my major things as usual though. I think it, it's pretty much business as usual. Look at what's ranking, try to figure out why it's ranking and then try to mimic that and then add to it quality wise, not necessarily quantity wise. That's what I've been doing. It's how I've regained a bunch of number one rankings on my main site. Um, it's how I've gotten like my, well, she does SEO site ranking better as well. Um, still things like original images seem to matter a little bit, but more in travel for sure. Um, I think decorative images are mattering a lot less now, so you don't necessarily need them just to round out the post. Um, but user experience with slow sites as usual, bad. Make sure you speed up your site immediately. Um, make sure it's easy to get through your site and navigate through your site. I do think the two click rule or even the three click rule is pretty important. I've like, um, kind of what's the term? Oh, I don't remember the name of it, but essentially like the click through clicking through your site for them to get to any post, it should only take two or three clicks from your homepage. Otherwise it's taking too long. People can't find stuff. And that's a problem. Um, having clear topic pillars, having um, clear topical authority on an area, internal linking those things, and then ultimately backlinks. Backlinks are king. And if you want my prediction for 2024 with like how it's all going to work with AI content and SGE and blah, 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 I don't really like giving predictions, but the one thing I'm pretty certain of is that backlinks will continue to be the most important ranking factor, even as much as Google doesn't want them to be. Like to some extent, 
Google is a popularity contest and we do have to make sure that we are getting people talking about us and that we are getting those backlinks. Um, I am testing a bunch of different backlink services right now, but ultimately my favorite thing to do for myself is just guest posting. It is easy. It's free. <laughs> like it's a great way to get links from your peers as well. Um, you should definitely have stuff from like your peers and from like big businesses and newspapers and stuff, but having links from your peers matters and having links generally matters because Google's like, Hey, people are talking about that thing. I'm going to pay attention, especially in the age of like people producing a million AI generated posts that they haven't edited in five minutes. We need to compete. And the best way we can compete is quality content. Cause that's the other thing is Google is getting better and better at figuring out what the heck we're talking about and then making sure that we get those backlinks. Now, I think that like some things that content optimizers can still help, but I don't necessarily think that they are the be all and end all that they maybe were beforehand, especially beforehand where like um, with semantic SEO and Google needing to understand like what's on the page, they're getting even better as their algorithm and AI systems get better at understanding it. So just mentioning certain words doesn't necessarily matter as much. However, typically those systems picked up on words that definitely matter, like things to do in New York. Empire State Building, Statue of Liberty. Well, you're definitely going to mention those. So like, um, I think they're fine, but I've always thought that they're kind of an extra cherry on top. They do not need to be the like pillar of your strategy. Um, they are just extra. So those are kind of the ways that um, I am combating the HCU, I guess, a little bit, making sure that the first thousand words of my post are super strong, that I get to the point, I give my users the information that they need immediately and in like the clearest way possible, maybe bolding it, maybe a key takeaway box, maybe whatever, just making sure it's like very, very clear. I've got you, I know the answer and this is how I can help you. Like I am the person to help you because of X. Um, making sure that it's easy for them to read my post, that they can get the answers they need quickly. Um, and that it's in a format that is like beneficial to them. So uh, not, I don't know, it takes a million years for them to find it sort of thing inside of the post. We want to get to the point ASAP and then backlink, 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 backlinks. I cannot stress the importance of backlinks enough right now, um, especially as we are trying to deal with brands who like, if you think about Viator, how many of us like link to Viator via an affiliate link? It's a lot of links. Um, how many of us like link to booking.com via affiliate links? A lot of us, uh, to the tourism board, to whatever, like they have more links. And so I do think backlinks are a great idea. And even if Google changes and gets better at just understanding content, if you've created strong content already, backlinks aren't going to hurt you. So as long as you're not building spammy backlinks, as long as you're like building them well, I think it is definitely, definitely beneficial. Um, and a really, really, really strong way to kind of future proof your site a little bit. So those are my HCU kind of analysis results. I will say two of my sites that got hit magically came back and I did nothing to them. So sometimes it is just a wait and see scenario, but for other people, even if you were doing everything right. Unfortunately, sometimes when you get struck by an algorithm update, it takes until the next algorithm to really bring you back. Um, and it sucks. Honestly, I'm not going to try and sugarcoat it. It sucks to get hit like that. And especially when it's something that you like pour your heart and soul into, but at a certain point, all you can do is try and maybe even just wait. Like it just depends if you are feeling totally out of it with SEO look it into some of those other traffic sources. I've seen people doing um, parasite SEO on Reddit. I've seen people starting Facebook groups or Facebook pages, um, people moving to Pinterest, web stories, Google discover, all sorts of things. You can do whatever you want. Like they're, they're all cool. They all exist. I would caution against Instagram and TikTok. They're pretty sticky platforms. So people tend to stick on them and not click away to other sites. Um, so those wouldn't be my first choice for traffic. However, you can make a lot of like actual money on them with sponsorship and things like that. So they could be a monetization option, even though they might not get you traffic up to you. Tons of options there. Um, I'm definitely prioritizing my email newsletters, um, but I've always kind of done that because email is a thing that you own. Um, but SEO drives people to that for me to some extent. So it's all still together. SEO is still my primary traffic source and the one that I love the most, I'm definitely looking into diversifying and I'm doing a bunch of tests for my SEO roadmappers on how to diversify and different, yeah, different methods and what might work the best for different people. Um, but ultimately I'm an SEO gal. I like it the best. It's really fun. Um, it's the data that I enjoy. And even though it is getting harder to rank now, 
we have so many tools to make it easier to write stuff. And so even if it takes 10 times as many articles to write, if you can write them 20 times faster with AI, you're still ahead of the game. So, and obviously I'm saying write them with AI, co-write with AI. Don't just let AI run rampant. You need to edit things, <laughs> especially as Google does get more and more, um, yeah, they're looking more and more for the personal experience and AI can add that for you, but you gotta like have done the thing then. Don't just make stuff up. Um, yeah, so that's my HCU analysis. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe for more and leave a comment if you have any questions, uh, comments, queries, concerns. But like I said, this is just like my take on the HCU. There's definitely tons of varied ones. Um, people are always gonna have something different that they're doing and that's great. I love seeing the different things people are doing to succeed. Ultimately, I do think the best thing to do is just write the best content and like make sure it is the best for your user not the best for you. So just because, I don't know, for me, the easiest thing to do would have been to record a one minute video on this, just telling you guys like business as usual, that wouldn't have been the best for you. So I recorded this full video. So do think about your user first. That's the key thing here and then get backlinks. <laughs> okay. I'll see y'all soon. Bye.